Hey, welcome beautiful souls to another episode of the Spiritual Catalyst podcast where we talk about all things weird and woo. I'm Sarah Lines, your host for today, the founder of thenewearthschool.com.au and today we're taking a look at courageously being the lighthouse with Renee Atkins. Renee is a renowned psychic medium, interconnection coach, certified intuitive life coach and holistic life coach, intuitive healer with a deep passion for guiding individuals on their journey to self-discovery. She empowers her clients with the wisdom and skills she has gained through the years of personal experiences and professional trainings. So welcome, Renee. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm so glad you're here today. And I'm really excited to talk about courageously being the lighthouse because this is a really big uh, topic that that sort of it's a bit of the elephant in the room, isn't it, in the spiritual communities at the moment? It is a big elephant in the room and it's kind of it's really a hush hush like people don't like to talk about it. And I feel like a lot of things happened and it needs to be talked about. (laughs) Absolutely. For us to move through this, definitely. Tell me more about, yes. you know, your experience with this um, and, and, you know, we can go from there. Yeah. So when I first started dipping my toes into spirituality full time, it was probably about seven years ago. And I really just wanted to learn everything that I could from everybody. And I truly do believe that, you know, we're, we're led and we go into places that we're supposed to, um, for the time being. And I definitely believe that we are all, we have roles to each other, right? So we all play roles for each other, whether it, and we judge it, whether it's good or whether it's bad. Um, at the time when you go through stuff, it doesn't really feel like that, but, um, you know, I, I definitely in hindsight, take a look at that. And so me being on this path and passionate about learning all I could and passionate about learning everything that I could about myself and new upstanding things, um, which is absolutely beautiful. You meet so many beautiful people. Well, on the other side of things, you meet people who really um, can cut you down a lot in the spiritual, on your spiritual journey. Um, and it's really sad because they have a really good thing coming, um, for them, right? They, they have a really, really good thing. Um, and it can be really hard and it can really be up your, um, your self-esteem and your confidence, um, as a person who's coming into the spiritual community, wanting to learn more and be more. Absolutely. And it, it, it's very like that tall poppy syndrome, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, we see a fellow, fellow people start to rise and some people it's received really well if they're already standing in their own light and power and confidence, uh, but it can trigger many others. Oh, That's absolutely. <laughs> I know all about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I would, I would, it would be hard for me to say that had never triggered me, right? Because I have been, you've been, I think we've all been on the receiving end of envy and jealousy of somebody else. It's like, well, why them? You know, but it's being able to step back and being like, okay, what do I need to work on for myself? (laughs) That's the power. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah, so there's, you know, there's a couple of ways that it can go. And, and like we said, it, this can be received really well with some who are already, you know, empowered and embodied in their light and sovereignty uh, and, and others can be quite triggered. And it can feel really awful when, when this happens, right? We can receive projections from others that we're wrong. Yeah. And it's almost like our worst fears come, come to light, right? <laughs> Yes. And in a way, it almost mimics the 3D world, right? Yeah. So it mimics our wounds that we have um, in the human world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which can, yeah, which is almost kind of, it can feel really backwards when you think about spiritual because you think everybody's enlightened and everybody's, you know, (laughs) and they are enlightened, beautiful and on their path. But sometimes, you know, it just, um, 
I think we're even more so mirrors to each other. We totally are. And I'm glad we're talking about this because I know that there are many spiritual entrepreneurs or spiritual men and women out there who would love to really deepen their purpose and share their gifts with the world. But there's a lot of fear holding them back because um, people can want to tear us down. You know, I, I believe we've all experienced this as we rise. Mm-hmm. Um so, you know, what what would you have to say about that, you know, with your personal experience and how you assist your clients? What do you believe the best way to handle a situation like this so it doesn't keep us, um, keep us at the same level for the rest of our lives, right? Because that, to me, is a waste of our life when we're here for those big things. But the fear of judgment and persecution is keeping us... Mm-hmm. Absolutely. The first, the stuff that I have experienced were really, I noticed even now looking back are really deep persecution and really deep abandonment and um, abandonment wounds. And so for me, it took a lot of stepping back and doing shadow work, really looking at the aspects of myself that needed that attention and needed that safety and needed that security Um, and I can't ever, I tell people, I'm like, shadow work is the key to your spirituality because if something triggers you, it's not always going to be, you know, you know, somebody triggering you is not always going to be something in you, but it is right. It's going to be how you receive. It's going to be how you, um, how you really look at things and how you look at yourself more importantly in your life. And I always tell people our biggest thing here is our soul's journey, which is really deepening the relationship with ourself to find our soul purpose, to find our life purpose. And so shadow work is one of the best things that you can do. And it's really just engaging those emotions, sitting with those emotions and being able to shift those emotions versus talking about it and being in that story and being in that story and being in that story where we're not all we're really doing is just validating the story and not really the emotions and the deeper root of what is going on. Um, yeah. So we, a lot, a lot of my clients I do, um, I actually shifted it recently, the perspective and it's, I consider it compassion alchemy. Because when you do shadow work, you have to have this beautiful container for yourself with grace and self-compassion and have that self-awareness. Um, I really love that, Renee, because compassion and love at the end of the day is the key, I believe. Um, you know, when when we do it, endure these uh, difficult times, when it brings up our stuff for us to look at, What I've come to realize is the more I love and accept myself and have compassion for myself, um, the less those outside judgments or influences affect me. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people, they realize that as they're in the depth of it, right? Maybe not in the the depth depth of you know the first time they're doing shadow work because it is uncomfortable and it doesn't feel good and it brings a lot of stuff up but um you know when we can look back and be like wow we shifted so much and I'm I've noticed that I'm starting to love myself more and more you realize that this works absolutely oh I love this it's almost like forced shadow work isn't it It, it's really an opportunity (laughs) for us to go really deep and then (laughs) reap the rewards afterwards absolutely and i know a lot of people are fearful of shadow work they hear shadow work they think oh my gosh i don't want to do this but i i can't that's why i shifted the verbiage into compassion alchemy because you really, really have to learn how to, like you said, have that self-awareness, that self-compassion, that self-love for yourself to be able to do this work. And so I always tell people, I'm like, self-compassion work is shadow work because we're learning to love ourselves no matter what and have that space and compassion. 
I love that so much. So, so for those listeners who are like, I want to be the lighthouse, you know, I, I, I want to have the courage to be the lighthouse because this is my purpose. Um, it sounds like what you're saying is, you know, shadow work is, is the easiest way to sort of navigate that and not be as if affected. Tell us a bit more about what, what that might look like. So I love that you're calling it compassion alchemy. That actually feels really good. What might that look like for someone if they were to come to you to work on, uh, to work on this sort of thing? So it would look like I, so I would take them through like what compassion is. Cause you know what? People have this misconception between self-love and self-compassion and what it really looks like. And so we start off with the basics. I start off with the foundation work of what is self-compassion? What is self-love? How we can bring, how we can cultivate more self-compassion in our lives and how we can start to blend the two into self-love. And so that looks like a lot of us taking situations. If When I work one-on-one with somebody, I t- if they're in a situation where they need um some coaching we'll take that situation and um we'll apply what they've been learning to that situation right what are some of the judgments you start to look at how you talk to yourself they start to look at how they treat themselves um when they're in in a space where they need just grace are you judging yourself or are you loving yourself and it it's taking all of these aspects and really putting them together. And it does take time. It's not something that is done in six weeks because it does take practice. Um, Heck, I've been doing this for a year and a half and I still catch myself. (laughs) I still catch myself going, what was I thinking? I'm like, nope, nope. (laughs) This was my decision and it's okay. (laughs) And it's really just taking your verbiage and really flipping it. And I'm not going to say like positive verbiage because you need to really take a look at the emotion and all emotions matter. That's what I tell people. All emotions matter because they have this, we we grew up with this misconception. I'm not sure about you, Sarah, but I did where it's like being angry, being mad, being bitter, being resentful, being, you know, all those things were bad and you are not allowed to have that. Yes. Being sad, being depressed, you know, and so we always had to hide those parts of ourselves and there was shame added on it and guilt if we, you know, if we went ahead and knew that. And so if we went ahead and did have those feelings, that guilt, oh my gosh, I can't believe I actually am so mad at this person. I can't be mad at this person. Well, why can't you be mad at this person? They invoke some real emotions. <laughs> oh, I, I just love that. that it's so, so needed because I think many of us were raised as, as yes, I I was um, raised in a way to label things like anger is bad. Um, So, you know, as what we're talking about today, being that lighthouse, when things pop up and I feel a feeling and I label it as bad, the shame instantly comes in on that. And, Mm -hmm. and then it's time sounds like what you're saying is that is the time to go into that shadow work aka compassion alchemy yes beautiful and some and sometimes it can be hard to do it right there and then so I usually have to pull my phone out or I have a little notepad (laughs) and I write it down so that I actually go back and do it yes yeah that's good that's really good because you know feelings do subside and we do feel better but would you (laughs) say that that original you know that wounding or that trauma or whatever that feeling we want to call it is it hasn't actually gone anywhere because we haven't processed it yes yeah and and so i i find it it's that's almost an act of um not doing on purpose but we're suppressing it and the more we suppress these same emotions they come they um, start to be presented to you in different ways with different people, right? So the same thing happens, I do believe, until we actually deal with um, what our inside is really feeling like, right? Yeah. Um, 
I, 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 someone told me the other day, the reflection of how you feel on the inside is going to be reflected on you on the outside. And I 100% believe that. I completely agree with that too. And as you're talking about, it will come back. It's that cycle. And, you know, for those of you listening, if you're wondering why certain things just keep, uh, in quotes, happening, this is why there is something there that we need to go into. And, you know, Renee is the perfect person here to take you into that shadow work through compassion alchemy, which I really just love the vibration of that calling it compassion alchemy Renee because I feel like that's shifting shifting even the 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 view and, and the paradigm of what everyone thinks that shadow work is because it actually is quite empowering and quite beautiful once we take that journey yes Yes, thank you. It was. It took me a long time. Um, you mentioned shadow work to somebody, like I was saying earlier, and the first thing they want to do is they're like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I don't blame them. Who wants, they hear shadow, they hear of dark, they hear of light, you know, and they're like, I don't, I don't want to meet my dark self. Yeah. And, and I, sorry, go ahead. Nope, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I completely understand that years ago when I came into recovery, I went through a 12-step program, which for me, it was shadow work. It was meeting myself. And I was so afraid I was going to see this monster staring back at me. So I know, I understand the fear that comes with that, but I also understand the miracle that lies ahead when we decide to go there. Because no one else can do this for you. No one else can make this decision for you. But there are beautiful mentors like Renee who specializes in this that can guide you through the process Mm -hmm. and it's thank you and you yeah when you have to meet yourself at a level where you really didn't like yourself or where you were at rock bottom that is really scary for somebody and having somebody help guide you through this and help you you know achieve what you want to achieve which is know yourself better at a deeper level have a relationship with yourself you know, that's a win. And what I was saying earlier is I truly do believe, and this is something I tell all my clients in my classes that I teach as well, you know, we're here to be human and we're spiritual beings, but we have to make sure that we balance the two of them. You can't ignore one or the other and you can't um, be one more than the other. I mean, you can, but there's going to be such an imbalance in your life that you're just going to feel lost and you're going to feel stuck. And you're, you don't, you're going to, you know, probably end up doing something that you, um, you'll have to do more shadow work on. So it's really important to really be courageous, right? Be the lighthouse that wants to go ahead and have that relationship with yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as we, as we know, as, as women, women of the shadows, <laughs> Mm. it's just so beautiful like they're the rewards come with this kind of work they really do yes yeah they they really do i love this topic so much um renee thank you so much for talking to us about this and for the listeners who are possibly thinking okay I want to step up, but I'm super scared about being that light because people are going to see my light because I'll be shining. Do you have, you know, one piece of advice for them that they can take away with from today? Yeah, you know, you're always going to be a beacon of light. If that is what you're meant to do, in fact, any light worker is a beacon of light. We shine our light no matter what we do. And I always tell people, take it slow. And, you know, maybe you don't want to step completely into it, but baby steps are the best way to go. And the more you shine your light on yourself, your inner light, the more your light is going to shine out. And you never know you could inspire somebody else. Yes. And so even if it's tiny baby steps, that's okay. Right? Because chances are you're, somebody's watching you and you're inspiring them to do the same thing. So I always say, shine your light, 
doesn't have to be if you don't want it to be out there so that a ton of people see you that's okay right because someone no matter what you do someone's gonna see you and they're gonna get inspired by what you do and that is that is the biggest thing we're here to inspire each other and to guide each other um and teach each other how to heal ourselves and that is, you know, one of the biggest, most beautiful thing about seeing all these spiritual awakenings right now. Mm -hmm. And so if you feel called to do this, uh, but you don't necessarily don't want to step out in a big way, what I'm doing, just do it. Just do the internal stuff. And someone's going to see you, which is going to, like I said earlier, inspire somebody else, which is going to inspire somebody else. So it doesn't matter if you are practicing at practicing it like Sarah and I, or, you know, teaching or whatever it, every little bit counts, I think. Yes. I love that. That's the beautiful ripple effect of healing ourselves. I love it. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Renee. Uh, for those of those listening who would love to connect with you, where can we find you? Absolutely. So I am on Facebook. Um, my, my business page is Renee Atkins, and I also have a website, um, www.reneeatkins.com, and um, you can message me on my website and contact me, um, and yeah, you could do the same on my Facebook page. You can message me um, through my Facebook or through WhatsApp and just get in touch. Lovely. Thank you so much, and I'll make sure I uh, pop those links in this episode uh, thank you so much again for hopping on and talking to us about this today, Renee. And thank you listeners for being here with us. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving us a review and following us for more Spiritual Catalyst episodes. Bye. Beautiful. Bye. Thank you.